Welcome to Sports Connection. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director. Happy to be back in studio with Tate Matthews, my co-host. Tate, welcome back. Glad to be here, man. Zoom, you know, we, it's still fun, but always nice to be back in person with the crew. So glad to be here. Spring sports, full swing. I know we got a lot to talk about. Well, you're talking about Zoom. I mean, I, I do get some comments from the our many fans out there, not, not the folks in Gallatin, but uh, some of our other fans, my parents, for example, they, yes. they really they don't like it when it's Zoom. They, well, want, they want the studio action. That's right. You don't get the, the authenticity, you know, the intimacy. You can just feel the, you know, it's kind of like, you ever seen the, that interview when the mega powers met Hulk Hogan and Macho Man? And we don't really know what's going on here, brother, you know. <laughs> they were afraid it was going to blow up. We kind of have that. Yes, same kind of thing, obviously. Yes. Hey, let's start off. I was excited that this happened for a couple different reasons, but uh, I had a lot of athletes across the WCS make some commitments uh, for next level. Certainly the one that was most publicized would have been uh, Destin and Keaton Wade committing to the University of Kentucky uh, on Friday. Coach Coleman is showing up. What's going on, Coach? How are you, Coach Joints? Glad to be here. What did you think, Coach Coleman, about that uh, commitment? Very proud of Destin and Keaton and the way they have uh, been so – complimentary and, and, and made sure to include their teammates along the way of, of, of this journey they've been on. And Kentucky's getting a pair of good ones. Uh, I'm really happy for them. And, and, and uh, I'm just really glad we got them back for one more year going up to 6A. You know what I'm saying? I bet you are glad. And by the way, Coach Coleman, you did a great job setting up with the backdrops, had the balloons on the side. Uh, uh, I knew you were kind of a particular guy and took care of your stuff, but that really impressed me the way you took care of that on Friday. Thank you. Had a lot of help, but uh, learned from two of the best, Dr. Qualls and then, of course, you, the way you all market and, <laughs> and uh, know how to brand. Uh, took, took a page out of y'all's book, and um, we were very, very pleased with the way it turned out. Appreciate you stopping by, Coach. Okay. I'm going to go work on the wing tee. <laughs> Tate, uh, our predictions came true. Yes. That it was. Now, as you, you know, I mean, I hope it's signed, sealed, and delivered because I'm a big – Kentucky fan, but uh, really, until it's on the dotted line, and that's you know come what next December? Yes. Then it's still up for grabs, but uh, feel pretty good uh, about the Wades going to Kentucky, and hopefully that holds up. I would say this: as long as that staff doesn't change, which no reason why it would change, right? I would say as long as that staff doesn't change, they will be part of BBN, Big Blue Nation. We talk about it a lot off air. Many know you're a big Kentucky fan. I think Coach Stoops is very happy there. He's very entrenched there, and he's branched out into a lot of other areas. It's not just – if he were to leave, it wouldn't just be leaving the University of Kentucky football. It's going – I don't I don't even think he'd go back for Iowa. Yeah, that's the one that I, I keep thinking, eh, maybe, but I think you're right. He's doing a good job there, got it rolling a little bit. I expect them to keep climbing in the East, too, Tate. No doubt. And, and, and what you know is um, if you haven't been there, for those that maybe don't get it, let me tell you something. What Kentucky's done with their football facilities, with Kroger Field and, then, and, and where the athletes and everybody plays. Lexington reminds me a lot of Wilco. I know it does you or parts of it. Yeah. Um, hey, man, I get it. I, could, I, I guarantee you the visits that they had were good, and I could – can see wanting to go there. Plus, um, they've been playing better than the team in the school in the East the past <laughs> few years. So, congratulations to both of them. But I do think two things. One, we've had big time recruits before, big big time recruits. I don't I don't remember in the mid state. I don't remember twins where both of them were this highly recruited. And then you know uh, the way they've handled it, I think is really neat, man. Because I can't imagine having that much publicity when you're 17, 18, not letting it go to your head. But they haven't. Well, I know their parents have to be proud because they are just total humility, class acts. And you can just tell uh, when I was there on Friday how the school feels about them. I mean, right. it's real obvious. No doubt. Hey, let's talk a little. Uh, uh, got a new hire, Independence Girls Basketball. Tony Hill 
who's not new to WCS, but he's new to Independence Basketball. Of course, Coach Hill was the athletic director, girls basketball coach at Centennial. Had a great four-year run there uh, since leaving Centennial. Had stops at Portland, Huntland, and recently assistant coach at Riverdale. Uh, but he's back at Centennial. They went from 8-18 eight and 18 to 19-9, and nine, won 55 games. And it was the best four-year run in school history. And, Tate, this week's gym, the only sectional round slash substate appearance was in 2017 under Coach Hill at Centennial. That was a 56-54 loss to Clarksville, just one game away from the state tournament. So exciting hire for Independence to get Coach Hill. Oh, I think very exciting. And, and, and going back to that, that sectional game against Clarksville, it was at Clarksville. Uh, many remember you talking about it a few weeks ago. That's a tough – you were talking about boys basketball, but a tough place to play, kind no of a unique gym. And they had a chance with a last second – you know, it was – I don't know if it was half court. It was dang close. But they had a chance. They got one off to win it. Uh, think about that. You know, so not only the best run they've ever had, but he almost took them to the state tournament. So I got to think they're very excited about it. Uh, I know you were in the know – uh, what you can tell and not tell. I'd, I'd love to know how that came about. Was that Mary Beth White said, hey, I'm going to see if, if, if Coach Hill wants to come back. Coach Hill reached out to them. But I think it's, I think it's a really good hire, and, and I'm, I'm glad it was able to work out. Well, I think, you know, WCS is one of those places. Uh, if, if you've been here and you leave, I think that draw to come back, Coach Crawford, Coach Hester, <laughs> Coach Hill now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're like anything else. We've got issues and problems and things that maybe coaches think are inconveniences. Uh, I know we talk a lot about strength and conditioning during the school day. That happens in some other school districts. Uh, you know, no district is perfect. We've got a lot right going here and one being clientele, no which, which makes a big difference. No doubt about it. Uh, exciting time with the basketball program. And then – They've got a lot of young talent on the – we know about the young talent on the boys' side, but there's a lot of young talent on the girls' side too. So, uh, yeah, it's exciting, man. I mean, he's – I don't know, the the the, the South. <laughs> it looks like they're trying to make another run in basketball. It's going to be fun to watch. It is going to be fun cool to watch. cool thing is he knows what he's getting into too. He's He's been here. He definitely does. And, you know, uh, uh, Rome wasn't built in a day. It'll take him – probably a, a bit to get it going, but uh, he's proven he can do it because Centennial, when he took over there, it was in pretty bad shape in terms of wins and losses. So I expect that to work out well. Uh, he's the right guy for the job at the right time. I agree. I know he's excited too. Hey, here's something exciting. I know you've been pumping me for information the past couple of weeks, but let it be known the Wilcos are back. It will not be the virtual Wilcos. It's going to be the live Wilcos back at the factory in Franklin, June 15th. Tate, I'm excited about it. That's going to be great. Now tell me, what's this? It's going to, I know you're ironing out some details, but when you say back, like we're talking red carpet show, we're talking about athletes in the, is that Jamison Hall? I think that's Jam or Liberty. Liberty Hall. Of, Liberty Hall. Wow, that's going to be big. Red carpet at 530. Are we, like are we, we all, dressing up? Hey, listen, tuxes. Athletes. Now, what happens on this, just like anything else, uh, we'll follow whatever protocols have to be followed in June. I mean, here it's, what, a couple months away, so some things can change, and I hope some things continue to change for the positive. Correct. But definitely planning on being there live with athletes there, red carpet, the whole thing. It's going to be, be exciting. Can't wait. I cannot either. Now, for the, for the viewers, because you put a lot of thought into this, why, it, it, traditionally it's been in May. Why, why June 15th? Well, there's, like anything, there's no perfect date, right? Uh, really a couple of reasons. Number one being, especially with COVID, I fear, feel like the further we get away uh, and get to the summer, maybe the better chance we can have more people there. And the second reason, and this is, this is a, a reason I was thinking about anyway, giving the spring sports athletes a chance to get finished. Uh, you know, and again, I, it's been great having it in May, but we've had teams that were still playing Maybe it was hard to figure out who players of the year were trying to get that done too early. Plus, uh, there's been times where uh, uh, there was a team announced as team of the year, and then a week later somebody wins the state tournament in, in a spring sport, and maybe they would have been up for it. So, again, 
Uh, I understood why we did, did it in May because the, the negatives of doing it in June when we do the golden ticket tour and some of that, it's going to be worth to get people back to the buildings and trying to do the video packages. So there's some negatives of having it. The main reason is to make sure those sports are done and they, they don't have to worry about, hey, we're not worrying about a game. We're just going to go enjoy the Wilcos. I love it. It's going to be exciting. Can't wait. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I am. Great event that obviously Dr. Qualls got started. And I think it's one of the things, one of the many things, that makes it pretty darn special here in WCS. Uh, every school system we go in, they bring it up. Hey, that's really cool. I wish we had something like that. Well, I had a friend of mine who now coaches in the league who said, hey, uh, uh, I noticed that uh, uh, after games, you know, for the tournament, the WCS has the backdrops up and the media comes in and interviews the player like during the district basketball tournament. And he mentioned that to his district athletic director at the time. They said, oh, yeah, you can do that if you want to. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate that. I'll be out coaching the game if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it, Coach. So, yeah, I think it's neat. I think it's really neat. Hey, let's talk a little baseball. Let's talk a little baseball. So this past week, Ravenwood plays Franklin, and they split. So now you're thinking, oh, okay. Ravenwood, maybe they're just a team who can score runs. When they have those series against Summit, Brentwood, and Indy, maybe it's going to change. What do they do? They turn around in game one. At the time of this taping, they've got game two still to play. They go out and beat Summit 18-6 to at Summit. I don't think anyone saw that score coming, especially, and nothing against Franklin. Franklin's playing better. They've lost a, a bunch of one- and two-run games. But I think folks were saying, okay, maybe that Ravenwood record is not as solid as we think. Well, after the 18-6 went over Summit, I beg to differ. Yeah, I mean, that was not, not so much that they beat them, but 18 runs against Summit. So, I, you're right. I, I thought Summit and Brentwood were starting to separate themselves, and then Ravenwood does that. So Did I give them the old WCTV jinx where I said, hey, I'm going with, I'm going with <laughs> Summit? I said that last week. You did, but I went with Ravenwood, so maybe I jinxed them. You did, or did you say Brentwood? I thought I went right. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We won't. We won't go back. And That's right, <laughs> Mr. Producer. We need to. <laughs> um, I, that's a lot of runs. Eighteen. It's that's a like lot scoring of runs. sixty in football. It's a lot of runs. <laughs> well, now I will say this because to, to, to in our defense, I do think the top three is feeling pretty solid still. Yeah, You've got Ravenwood and Brentwood both at eight and one. You got Summit at nine and two. When you go down to fourth place, it's Independence and they have four losses. So still looks like those three, at least for now, uh, are going to be the top three. Of course, a lot of things can still change. Taking a look at that Ravenwood game, uh, the bats sixteen hits for Ravenwood. Four for five for Austin Johnson. He had a double and four RBIs. Blake Bevitz, three hits, including a two-run homer. Ryan Augustini, three for six, two doubles. Miles Denton, four RBIs. And Stephen Bell, a home run. That is impressive against a really good Summit team. <laughs> yeah. It almost, that's one of those where you're almost like, is that a, is that a typo? They, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, four for five, that's as good as, you know, I guess five for five is as good as it gets. But four for five, man, that's, that's, they were hot. Must have just been one of those days. I'd love to know how many pitchers Coach Curb went through in that game because it sounds like anything they threw at him, it wasn't working. Well, veteran coach like Coach Kirby, too, I'm just – although there was, a, there was a, uh, an inning late in the game, I believe, where they really uh, pushed it out. But at some point he might have known, okay, let's save some arms and make sure we're ready for game two. Uh, Summit, it looked like, you know, they jumped out – uh, scored four runs in the bottom of the first to take a 4 nothing lead. Drew Plummer and Cameron Lee both with home runs. So it was looking like, okay. And then Ravenwood, which shows you what kind of hitting team. Again, I can't say it enough. Uh, you know, we kept looking at their games, 12 runs, 9 runs, 12 runs. But to have 18 runs against Summit, very impressive. Great job of Coach Bourne and Ravenwood. Yeah. It's going to be fun to watch and see what happens in the tournament too because that's – it's not like they've – they haven't had 18 runs, but like you said, they, they've been scoring runs. They are going to score runs, you know. And so that, I think that right there just showed when, the, when it's all clicking, then it's really going to be scary because they can, they can swing the bat. Franklin, as I had mentioned, had a 4-1 win over Ravenwood earlier in the week. Snapped the 11-game winning streak from Ravenwood. 
Uh, Joseph Waters, two for four with a home run for Franklin. Uh, Blake Davis with Ravenwood's only hit. One hit from Ravenwood, which is impressive. A.J. Russell with the win for Franklin, five and two-thirds innings. No hits and struck out. So only one hit for the night for Ravenwood. That's pretty impressive there for Franklin. Very impressive, and it's, it was needed. You know, you could tell Coach Whidbey, and, and by the scores, they're in them. They're playing hard. He kept saying, we're close. We just got to put it all together, and that's what they did. They put it all together, that pitching, defense, and hitting. And um, that was a big win for them, I would think, for their confidence and, and kind of, you know, you know, you've been there. You're a coach early on at, at a place, you know. It's always nice to get one of those wins where you can say, see, guys, I, what I've been telling you is, is true. We're, we're, we're on the right track. We just got to put it all together. I think that was big for that. Yeah, that's 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 a great point. You got to words only go so far. You got to have some results, a great result there. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Brentwood, 12-2 win over Franklin. Uh, Paul Delegati was the winning pitcher in that game, had a complete game, and then a big seven-run fifth for Brentwood got him to the 10-run rule. You're up by 10, the game ends. Ben Kaler, three RBIs. Cade Cawthon and a Andrew Billington with two RBIs each. Brentwood, again, I know we talk about them, but Coach Moore and Brentwood, they're playing pretty darn well, too. Oh, yeah. I think probably more than any of them, Coach Kirby and Coach Moore. They're teams. They are what they are. Those two guys are what they are, and that's how they're going to play, you know. And, and uh, everybody will tell you, Coach Moore, they're going to show up every day. They're going to work. You know what I'm saying? And, and he's been there long enough now that those guys, th these are all just guys that have been there, and now it's their turn but they've watched it, they know what it looks like, and uh, they're going to be a tough out, you know, anytime you play them. But, and, and that's, like I said, it kind of it kind of looked like Brentwood's trying to – Brentwood's playing really well right now. They are. Uh, let's talk a little Fairview. Love this. 22-1 win over East Hickman. Uh, they bounced back from a 7-4 loss to Montgomery Central. Morgan Jean, Brody Mann, those guys getting it done from the plate. Uh, big wins for Fairview, or that one in particular, 22 to 1. And then Nolansville, Coach Hudson got it going out there. Uh, they sweep Forest, 7 1, 7 5, and I love this. They play Brentwood, they lost 8 4, but that's smart. Trying to get those games because Coach Hudson's got a really good team out there, trying to give them some exposure to some larger uh, squads, so to speak, in, the, in a larger class. So uh, Nolansville, and you mentioned this last week. When it matters, they're going to be right there. That's right. He, he's done that every year. He's scheduled those guys every year. He'll continue to do it. He believes it. He knows it. He's seen it. You know, that makes you better come to postseason. And that Forest win's a big win because that's a district win. It usually is Forest, Marshall County, Nolensville. Um, so, yeah, he, he knows what he's doing. He knows the blueprint. Let's talk a little softball, Tate. Uh, Dixon County, you know, we – I've been one to use Dixon as a punching bag, so we got to give him credit here. Nine and one, leading the league uh, as a, at, at this time, at the time of the show. So Dixon's nine and one. Summit seven and two. Then you've got Franklin Brentwood at six and four. Ravenwood four and five. And with softball, it's been so unpredictable. You look at Ravenwood; they sweep Brentwood for the year, right. which is hadn't it, happened in a while. Hadn't happened in a long time. I believe it's first time in six years that that's happened. Uh, and then you look, you think if they sweep Brentwood, they're going to have seven, eight wins. They only have four wins in the league. Brentwood, although they were swept by Ravenwood, they have six wins in the league. So uh, pretty interesting league in softball, and it seems like every week, every game, you never know what's going to happen. Speaking of that battle of the woods <laughs> or wood game, Ravenwood with a 6-2 win. Uh, they dropped a game earlier in the week at Summit 4-2. Uh, but check out this game. I mean, you keep hearing her name. Avery Wismer, she was the winning pitcher. She struck out 17. She went two for three from the plate, stole home for the first run of the game, and drove in two later. Again, Avery, you know, you got to pick it up and play a little better there for, <laughs> right. there for your team. Couldn't One go game. three for three? Gosh. It's like uh, those guys that used to dominate wiffle ball games. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And and it's it's every game. Every right? game. Every every time you see that, she is she stepped up. And that's one thing I love about softball. Usually the pitchers in softball are really good hitters as well and base runners and um, 
she's just she's an athlete, man. I think I'd be finding ways to get her out for other sports. She can she she can compete for sure. But yeah, that's that that's big um, for for Ravenwood to get the, uh, the 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 sweep of the Battle of the Wood. Uh, hadn't happened. I'm guessing you said six years. Six years. So my guess is that hasn't happened since Coach Powell's been here. Um, but Coach Brown's doing a great job. She's a former Bruin, Lady Bruin, um, and um, she's growing the program. It, numbers have gotten down, starting to get those up, and you can see it pay off. Uh, but I think what you said is this. I, I hate to say it, but Dixon County's clearly number one. They've separated themselves. Two, three, four, five, I, I think that thing could end – any of them can beat any of them. No doubt about that. Brentwood, Emily Cockrell, two for three. And then you saw this, I believe, makeup game. They play on Saturday. Brentwood with a 2-1 win over Franklin. And this is the correct pronunciation, by the way. Morgan Salmon, that's correct. Yes. Her ninth home run of the year, which sets a record for Brentwood High School. And she's a transfer in. Did you see that? I did not. Yeah, she's uh, she's a commit to Santa Clara. She transferred to Brentwood after high school sports were canceled in California. Great pickup for Brentwood uh, to get Morgan yeah, playing we'll, we'll well. That. And she's a shortstop. Pretty important position. We'll take that. We'll take that. That's big. Hey, well, she's got nine. Cockrell's got how many? Six. Uh, that's that's tough because you you cannot pitch to one of them. It's it's hard to not pitch to two of them. You're going to give up some runs. Well, and you got both cockerels. That's right. So now you've got three. I mean, you know, Have walk the bases that. loaded. I don't know where they're hitting the lineup, but you're not going to walk the bases loaded. So uh, those bats for Brentwood, which goes back to show what a great job Avery did, and then Franklin as well, uh, only giving up two runs on Saturday. It's hard to keep those bats silent uh, for Brentwood. Page, 8-4 win over Centennial. Tia Atkinson, Sophia Cuevas both had two hits. And here's a pretty interesting stat. Josie and Ella Polk, they each singled and scored twice. They had a combined six stolen bases. Josie, 18 in 12 games for Paige. It's like the modern-day Lou Brock. <laughs> I mean, wow. That was strong. I, I brought that back I in like the past. I've been, I've been working on that. <laughs> You've been waiting to use it. That is strong. Um, Ricky Henderson, maybe, right? He was... I guess he broke, broke uh, Lou Brock's records, right? Stolen bases, but I want to take it a little further back. That was strong. No, that was very, um, <laughs> well, my was very strong. My predecessor, big Cardinals fan. Yeah. Baseball. <laughs> uh, I kind of liked Ricky Henderson. I was always a big Ozzie Smith, Vince Gibson guy. I know they were Cardinals. Vince but, uh, Coleman. Vince Coleman, yeah. Vince Gibson was. Oh no, Vince Coleman, <laughs> twenty nine. One of your old buddies from the past, man. <laughs> he was he used to be the head coach of Louisville football. Crazy dude. Uh, that's big, man. Page, hard to believe that, again. And Page is sitting at the bottom of the standings. Yeah, I mean, again, kind of a back and forth. You never know what you're going to get. Don't get too comfortable. Don't get too comfortable. Nolansville with a couple of big wins: nine zero over Central Magnet, six zero over Marshall County in the two games. Ryland Smith had two complete games, 25 strikeouts. Macy Dupree, Lexi Hall, Avery Patton, Emily Gable, all with multiple hit games. And then here's one for you. Fairview, 19-0 over Hickman County. Casey Mullins, we remember that name from basketball? Dang what right. does she do? She, go out, she goes out and tosses a no-hitter. That's Fairview funny. against Hickman and East Hickman this past week. Didn't go very well. I was about to say, we weren't real nice to the Hickman schools. <laughs> no. What was that total of uh, 41 to 1 in those two games? 41 to 1, our favorite CTE director, your predecessor, resides in Hickman County. He probably wasn't able to go to the IGA last week because <laughs> we were so ugly to their teams. <laughs> is it Houchins? I mean, back where I'm from, I'm from a small town. They got Houchins out there, too. I don't know if that's. I grew up in Knoxville. We had White Stores, which is now Food City, but I'm with you. I get it. Soccer, Franklin, big 3-2 win over Ravenwood. It was a big district matchup, which will go a long way to determine who will be in the top three. Franklin had goals from Brady Whelan, who had two, Landon Robbins. And in goal for Franklin, they've got a freshman in there, Aiden Moss. So to give up two goals uh, against Ravenwood, pretty good outing. Uh, Ravenwood goals, Jaden Chisholm, Nick Dang. 
And then Franklin, who will play Brentwood this week, that'll determine probably who wins the league. Yes. I was a little bit surprised Brentwood lost one nothing against Hendersonville at Brentwood. Franklin had beaten Hendersonville 8 nothing. Correct. So what's that mean? Probably nothing. But I, that was a little bit surprising to me that they took that loss. Hendersonville, great program, but nothing like what Coach Purcell and Brentwood has had, had what they've had the past couple of years. No doubt. This is going to be a great game. It's going to be – Fast, physical, uh, intense, and and can't wait for it. And um, Coach Burgoyne, you know, I, I, I want to say seven new starters this year. Um, relatively young. You mentioned Aiden. Now that's because the last goalkeeper started for four years. But I don't care. You know, we talk about it all the time. I don't care what sport it is. You're starting as a freshman in a Triple A program or six A if it's football. Uh, Man, that's big. I, you know, at 15, I know, and in, in, in a position, you want to talk about how, you know, you've been there. Uh, th- talk about a position you've got to trust somebody, goalkeeper, and we're, he might not even be able to drive. Uh, so you're right, he's playing really, really well. I got a little, it's not a, it's not a gem, but it's a, a tidbit. Morsel, a morsel? Yes. Or a tidbit? Coach Purcell, a morsel, yes, I like <laughs> it. A nugget. Uh Right there at 300 wins. Oh, he could e- he could either get 299 or if they could win. Now think about that. One, it'd be big because they're going to win wow. the, the district. But right at about 300 wins, it could be against Franklin. It's going to be at Cheek Park. By the way, uh, I know you walk back there sometime. Is there a better looking soccer complex it, it's, than that? It's pretty fun back there. It is neat, man. So. I don't know. It's gonna be a great. It's gonna be a great environment. Um, but um, the way Franklin's scoring goals, if they get hot, man, they they can put points up in in, in bunches, which, as you know, is tough to overcome in soccer. Centennial also with a big win, three win over Summit last week. In track, uh, Siegel Invitational and in girls. Uh, Independence finishes third. Nolensville fourth. Franklin fifth. Ravenwood sixth. Page fifteenth. Centennial twentieth. On the boys' side. Franklin gets the win at that meet. No one's will second. Ravenwood seventh. Independence 15. And Centennial 18th. And then also, Brentwood participated at a meet at MBA. And I thought this was pretty impressive. Their boys, four by 400. They had the best time recorded this year in the state. Now, think about this. Their time was 326.88. Second place was 331.90. That's five seconds. <laughs> That's a pretty big deal. Well, and also, 326.88, and they're running 400s. <laughs> Do the splits on yeah, that. That's pretty good. <laughs> but listen, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here. They got a pretty good chance to win the state title this year. I'm talking about the 4x4. Four four. Oh, no doubt about it. <laughs> I think that's the Doug Hall relays. That's a... That's a good meet. So, man, that's awesome. And I, and also, uh, to go back, you were talking about um, the, I believe it was in the Siegel meet, but uh, Lee Walters, who we've talked about, seems like forever. I mean, she's been winning. Uh, she, she ran um, in the Wilco Championships, ran the second fastest 3,200-meter uh, time in the state. Strong. Very strong. In that same meet, uh, the 800 and 1600 meter Jordan Rail from Ravenwood, uh, a winner, and then uh, back to the meet at NBA, Caitlin and Kevin Vanderkolk, uh, they win three fourths first place, 800 and 1600. Caitlin finishes second in the 1600, or it would have been a complete sweep in those four events. So the more things change, the more, the more they, they stay, stay the same. same. <laughs> yeah. Did you notice the discus uh, winner on the boys' side over in the Seagull, Carter Miller? Dual sport athlete. We love the dual sport athletes. Love them. Doesn't seem to be hurting him. I keep seeing on Twitter he's getting offers. Oh. But he's got to do it year round. <laughs> you mean specializing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we, that, we have and, and Holland Powers wins the 100 meter again. I, I, you know, I got to think she's a favorite to win it or win both of them or, and maybe even a jumping event too. She, you want to talk about uh, fem- explosive female athletes. Go check her out. No doubt. Hey, let's talk a little tennis to finish up. I thought this was big time because you're talking about difference in class sizes. The Fairview boys are undefeated on the year. They had a 5-2 win over Independence, and 
talking about how the district is sort of shaking out. Uh, got a couple matches still to play, but on the girls' side, Ravenwood 8-0, Franklin 7-1, Page 4-2, Summit 6-3, Brentwood 5-3, Centennial 4-3. Can't remember the last time that Brentwood, and of course it's not over, sitting at number five on the girls' side. On the boys' side, it's, it's Ravenwood in first, again, undefeated, just like the girls' team at 8-0. Brentwood seven and one, Franklin six and two, Page five and two, Centennial and Independence both four and four. So a lot still to play for there in tennis, but I thought it was pretty interesting on that girl side in particular, where you've got Brentwood fifth place. Yeah, and I wonder we need to dig a little deeper. I wonder if there were some matches where maybe they didn't have everybody. You know, you got to think about that now in in twenty twenty one. But the other part of it is Franklin and Page have really improved their, their – and some have really improved their tennis programs. They've all – Ravenwood and, and Brentwood were always up at the top. They haven't come down. The others have come up, you know. And so that's been fun to watch. And the, the thing that's – I think it's too far away this year, but the, the thing that's neat to watch, you know, the spring is always where Brentwood would get a little bit of lead in the Director's Cup. Or a lot of lead, but sometimes a little bit. And in the spring is always where they separate themselves. And tennis was always a big part of it. If Ravenwood could make a run in both tennises, now well, maybe we got a conversation. Might be too much to catch up this year with what football and volleyball did and then what girls' track's probably going to do. But still, if they could get a couple of state championships there, state tournament appearances, close the gap. And Fairview, boys undefeated in tennis, hey, Doctor, since Dr. Jones has been there, uh, I want to say it so bad, but hey, lady, you call him Dr. Jones. <laughs> uh, <laughs> athletics is – now, I think part of it is Fairview's growing, but, but Fairview growing, the community growing. Uh, they've got more and more athletes coming in there, and the emphasis he's put on athletics, Fairview just keeps getting better and better. Well, and the thing I, I like about tennis uh, – and you're right about Fairview. We keep talking about them every week at first, or, oh, hey, look what they did this past week. Uh, but, but going back to tennis, it's like wrestling, it's like track, it's like golf. You got that team element, which I personally love, but then you've also got, if you have an individual or two who can play well, they can advance themselves and do well in the individual part of the uh, district, region, and state tournament, which I love that part of it too. Without a doubt, you can get you, you can have success both ways, get points both ways. Uh, you're right, it's fun. And that's the cool thing, too. Uh, it, you know, you can be good at tennis anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Um, be fun to watch, see where they end up. Tate, good to see you again this week. Glad we're back in studio. Me too, man. Um, really excited about the Wilcos. Congratulations sure. on the Wade boys going to Kentucky. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Sports Connection.